Hillsong artist Marty Sampson, a worship leader for you know, famous Hillsong, uh, based out of Sydney, Australia. Uh, he made a statement recently, and they all made the statements via Twitter. I mean, I'm not sure why you tweet in the first place. This is just, you tweeters. And, uh, <laughs> He said, I'm genuinely losing my faith, and it doesn't bother me. Well, what's going on here? Uh, first of all, uh, Franklin Graham, when he was brought to awareness of all this, he said, first of all, none of these guys are leaders. Because he was asked the question, what do you think about these leaders? I was already putting this together in a sermon and uh, when I picked up on this lead. Because a leader will model what he believes. And leaders uh, don't shout from social media. That's just attention grabbing. But the funny thing is, is every one of them tried to delete their posts. But how many know, once it's out there, there's something capturing everything. Uh, I feel sorry for them. Because there will be a day of reckoning before God to give an account for our actions here on earth. And we better be prepared for that day. Uh, Gas said, the former pastor, he says, uh, my marriage was a sham and a constant source of pain for me. I did everything I was supposed to. Marriage workshops, counseling, Bible reading together, date nights every week, marriage books, but my marriage never became what I was promised it would be, he said. This is not the way that it should be. Somewhere these men have lost control, they've lost authority, they've lost dominion, if they will, if they ever had it. And the blessing given in Genesis promised to you and I uh, doesn't seem to be functioning in their life. Now, I know the stream of this message initially kind of has a negative connotation to it, but really, this is going to be a sermon on faith. But to lead into that, I need to let you know this evening, if you're considering disconnecting from your Christian life, this will be the most, not only is it absurd to do so, uh, if I could say, I don't like to use this word, but it's idiotic to do so. And it will cause repercussions, not only in your life, but in those around about you. Because people do watch us, and they do trust in you and I. I'm meditating on the scripture I'm going to preach out of tonight. It dawned on me that 4,000 years ago, man living in a tent in Palestine has an encounter with God. In Genesis 12, uh, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, Genesis chapter 22, deals with how God speaks to this man called Abram or Abraham. 4,000 years later, uh, we are still talking about him and are affected by him in 2019 uh, based upon a blessing that God gave someone 4,000 years ago. And we can still walk in this blessing. As a matter of fact, this man Abraham out of his encounters with God, recorded some covenants. And out of these covenants, or these agreements, or these contracts with God, uh, you and I can walk in a supernatural way. We can walk in blessing. We can walk in faith. We can walk in control and in dominion. Uh, and if we receive it by faith tonight, we possess it, we pass it down to generation to generation, uh, and they can be better off than we are. And because he was faithful to pass it down, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ today in 2019. Aren't you glad? Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to preach on the blessing of Abraham, Genesis, or Galatians, rather, uh, chapter 3, verses number 5 uh, through 9. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. 
In you, all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing uh, in Abraham. I want to look firstly with you tonight, considering what's involved uh, in what God spoke to Abraham. One promise to him in his seed and to all those who are a new creation, including you tonight. You know, that's the great thing. Uh, behold, uh, when a person comes into Christ, all old things pass away, all things become new. We become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Uh, and part of that is uh, we are given uh, a change of dominion. This is critical tonight. Uh, the moment you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, there is a diametrical shift, a uh, 180 degree tilt, if you will, and God grants us uh, a change of dominion and purpose. In the garden, man was able to walk with God. Apparently, he had unlimited knowledge insight and wisdom. Uh, man, we operate under the curse today. Uh, you've heard it said possibly uh, that they say mankind had an uh, ultimate IQ of 2,000 in its basic form, uh, resident power, tremendous mental knowledge, uh, but man today, if he's functioning with an IQ of 160 plus, uh, he's a genius. But the awfulness of the curse of man uh, and is our broken relationship with God tonight. There is a spiritual dimension that's lost when we entertain sin tonight. There's a spiritual dimension or a lack of equipping that comes uh, when we compromise our faith this evening. God breathed life through the nostrils of man, the breath of life. It's not just air in, air out this evening. Uh, but when God breathes upon us, uh, He literally connects us, or if we will tonight consider in the New Testament, He reconnects us with heaven. Uh, this is a great one of the great benefits of being born again tonight, uh, is when God breathes His Spirit into us, uh, we reconnect with the Master. We reconnect with our Maker. We are now given direct insight, a direct line to God. You don't need a priest. You don't need a miraculous medal. You don't have to count beads. You don't have to lay things at an altar, fruit or vegetables, or whatever it may be. God gives us a direct line to Him because God is connect, wants us to be connected with Him in heaven. Sin brings on lots of limitations to you and I tonight. We are now suddenly creatures of time. In other words, uh, we're bound by time this evening. Uh, mankind was not bound by time before sin. Uh, he was going to live. Adam and Eve were going to live forever on earth. Uh, and, but you and I now, because of sin, uh, we have these limitations this evening. Our bodies get older. We stop functioning the way that we used to function. And one day... Uh, we are going to taste death uh, unless Jesus Christ were to come. Uh, and I pray that he comes and takes us through the ceiling before the message is over tonight. He can say now, I really hope he does. With Abraham, God brings the limitations of the curse under a new covenant. Uh, and the limitations uh, can be removed tonight. How many need some limitations to be removed tonight? Uh, I need increased mental capacity. Uh, I need the ability to have long suffering uh, in this crazy, insane world that we live in. Uh, I need to be able to help people connect dots together. Uh, I can't do that on my own this evening. Uh, but with this covenant promises of God through Christ Jesus, uh, the limitations are removed uh, and man is to be restored back into destiny. Uh, so the problem with these three men uh, that have renounced their faith uh, is now they have disconnected from all of destiny. And if God is not gracious and merciful uh, to them, uh, it may end that way forever. And God is gracious and merciful tonight. But He won't violate uh, our own personal will. Zechariah says, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. If we are left in our own element tonight, if we're left in our own thinking this evening, we are limited once again by time and our surroundings. Uh, but when God comes into the scene, uh, the curse is broken uh, and things can begin to happen. We need things to begin to happen, not just mundane Christianity. 
I don't want to be a part of a Christian club. I want to be a part of a Christian movement. I don't want to be a part of a Christian organization. I want to be a part of something that's powerful, has dominion and authority. And I want God to shift some things for me. And I want Him to shift some things for you. Amen, amen. I don't want it the way it is today. I'm tired of the limitations. If something is going to happen, God is going to have to break us out from our limitations and bring us beyond ourselves. If we're going to operate supernaturally tonight, we have to operate beyond our limitations. Every one of us is limited by the curse of sin tonight. Our mental capacity limits us. But these limitations of the curse are removed in Jesus Christ tonight. We have testimony after testimony of people here uh, that are no longer in financial distress, that are no longer hooked, uh, they're not addicted, uh, they're not angry anymore, they're married to their same spouse, uh, they love their neighbor, uh, they come to church and they bring heaps of money into the house of God uh, and they gladly give it uh, because they love what we do, uh, because they have been set free uh, from the limitations of the curse. They're removed by Jesus Christ. John 3.34 says, For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, uh, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. These are tremendous words tonight, statements beyond the casual this evening. Uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we gain some things tonight. I want to gain some things this evening. I want to gain some authority. I want to gain some dominion. And the limitations, this is for somebody, I'm saying it again, listen, there are people here tonight, uh, you are bound by what you perceive uh, as limitations. These limitations uh, are a hurdle that you can't seem to get over this evening, uh, and you need to speak with your words like John 3.34 says, for he who God has sent speaks the words of God. I'm going to speak to the limitations. God, you're going to open this door for me because your word says it. God, you're going to bring blessing where there was curse. God, and I ask these things by the Holy Ghost. God, breathe on these situations and the limitations of the curse are removed. God said in that scripture, John chapter 3, that it's not by measure. In other words, the limits are broken to an unlimited dimension of God and something called universal authority is given. Universal authority is like the boss of the, of the big boss in the company. You know that if the uh, supervisor can't solve something, uh, the leader can't solve it, the shift leader can't, uh, you can go to the big boss because the big boss uh, has universal authority to make a decision. That's the way it is in Jesus Christ to those people who walk according to his plan and his purposes, uh, and he removes limitations. Somebody needs to hold on to this tonight. Jesus came into the world. He brought God's spirit back into man. And he removed the limitations of the curse. When Jesus breathed upon them in the upper room, God said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. We see the illustration of the fullness of God's spirit where there are no bounds. And God himself abounds in us. This is what I want tonight. This is what you want this evening. This is why on the day of Pentecost, uh, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind uh, because uh, there was some movement and God's plan and purpose for man was being fulfilled and God's breath is now coming back into man. Uh, that's why if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost tonight and speak in other tongues, uh, you need to. Amen. True. I mean, you need to. Amen. And if you've been filled, you need to continue to practice that. Because all things are made possible. As man enters into the dimension that God designed us to live. 
Genesis 1, verse number 2, it speaks darkness of, uh, was upon the face of the earth. The earth was in utter chaos, but the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and, and something began to happen, uh, and God uh, took that which was chaos and changed it. Listen, uh, when God's Spirit, when God breathes upon something, uh, He can take chaos, uh, He can change it and make it normal and productive for you and for I this evening. Because chaos uh, produces insanity. Amen. Yeah. People on chaos are like people on treadmills. They're running, but they're not going anywhere. Come on. <laughs> Amen. I want a change of dominion. Isaiah 32 is a picture of chaos, barrenness, man left to himself. Uh, if God leaves us to ourselves, one day we write a book uh, on dating, the next thing we need, we're divorcing our wife. This is what happens even to Christians. One day we're standing up uh, before a worship service of 10,000 people in Sydney, Australia, uh, uh, and, and, and a mighty grace of God, uh, and the next day we're tweeting in the middle of the night, I've lost my faith and I don't know where to find it. And I'm not sure if it bothers me. Yeah. How does that happen? Somewhere there's a loss of control, there's a loss of authority. I'm not mocking them, I'm just telling you this is happening. I did everything possible to make my marriage work, uh, and it didn't work according to Scripture. So God is wrong, uh, uh, therefore I am right. The Spirit of the Lord brings a change of dimension and dominion. This is speaking about land. When God spoke to Abraham, he's talking about physical land that he's going to take. Uh, listen tonight, we need land for our church. We need a bigger church. Yeah, we, need, yeah. we need property. I was talking to some of the, the young girls, and they were mentioning that they had faith for a building. Uh, and I said, listen, well, why don't you get some of you guys together in the middle of the night or whatever? Why don't you do a Jericho march around the building and claim it for it? And I think they got excited about that. Uh, you see plots of land. You might want to try that. We don't need eight, eight acres or ten acres. We need 12 to 16 acres. You see 12 to 16 acres? Pull over to the side of the road. You see the sign says 16 acres for sale. Just for a moment, just say, God, make it so uh, for us uh, that God's people can be blessed. Uh, and we can have some dominion and some authority. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Because God says, I put words in man's mouth, and when man speaks, things happen. Amen. I told you it was going to end up uh, uh, not such a bummer, sir. Because the Spirit of the Lord brings a change of dimension. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. Any church that walks according to natural reasoning of the mind is no more than a club. If you're here just to debate theology and just kind of hang out and scope out the chicks, uh, uh, and we got a lot of those, but they're saved and born again, uh, and they want to go to heaven, so if you're there to scam them, we don't want you here. <laughs> If natural reasoning of the mind where you'd be nothing more than a club. There are plenty of clubs. Go to the boys club. <laughs> we want people that God moves upon that goes beyond the area of limitations. Thank God we're not limited to who we are. Or we would be in big trouble. Can you say that? We would be in big trouble. What I'm preaching about is not some philosophy. It's practical areas of life where God will move on your behalf if you lay hold of your faith. The blessing of Abraham brings a responsibility tonight to govern. We have been given the responsibility. Good thing you get good preaching in this church. You've been given a responsibility to govern, to rule. Man likes to play with the devil, yet kind of keep him under control. They like to get close to sin, but not totally get into sin. But they sometimes get into sin, but sin doesn't completely control them. Uh, so they get a little bit more into sin, uh, because no, I don't, you know, and, and it goes like that. I remember when I was in the ninth grade, uh, being hypnotized was a big thing. And we had these professional hypnotists, and they came to school when I was in the ninth grade, and we had a, a, a nighttime uh, event at school. And they're going to hypnotize a bunch of people, so I decide, uh, yeah, I'm going to volunteer. I'm not saved. Uh, I don't know what saved means. Uh, I'm just a sinner. Uh, so I volunteer here on the stage. There's about 17 of us or so. And uh, it turns out uh, I set my mind that I'm really going to get hypnotized. Not thinking any of this stuff is real. 
Turns out I was a good candidate to get hypnotized because I said, I'm going to get hypnotized. And I did. <laughs> Next thing I know, God as my witness, all I have on is my skivvies, my chongies, <laughs> my tidy whities whatever you call them. A ninth grade boy does not let people see them like that. Parents, teachers, administrators, Coach Harmon with a paddle with the holes in it. And I did things I thought I would never do. And it just, when I put in this sermon together, it gave me this glimpse of the restraining influence that God has on his people today. Listen, the demonic is real tonight. You have some crazy uh, witchcraft based uh, video games up. You need to burn the fire out of them tonight. If you have a fast car, put them in the rear wheels uh, and do a burnout on them. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, we will set them on fire for you. Because man without God is out of control. This is why three adult leaders in Christianity, and listen, we're no better than they are. It can happen to you and I. Can do the things they do. We're not called to be victimized by the devil. We're not called to be, <coughs> excuse me, run over by Satan. In the garden, man was given to, to govern with dominion. Man was designed to be in control. We're to govern this world. We're to govern our lives. That means to show some authority and some rule and to protect that which is important to you and I. God has delivered you and I out of the place where we were owned by someone else who governed me. For that moment on the stage when I was hypnotized, I was governed by something else. And that is a picture of what happens to people who don't walk with Jesus Christ. Or who walk away, if you will. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. God says, I give you the keys of heaven. Places in our hands authority and dominion strategy and purpose. God gives us insights and revelation and wisdom. We are granted favor regardless of what the devil says or what the devil does. Amen. And we possess the gates. Some of you need to say that when you go home. Yes, Come on. There are people here tonight if you're having a hard time sleeping. You are having nightmares on a routine basis. Before you walk inside the house and say, listen, now, I hold the keys here because God put them in my hand. Yeah, man. Come on. I'm going to take back possession of my home. Yeah. I'm going to cast down unbelief. I'm going to set disbelief outside. And I'm going to take dominion, rule, and authority. Because what I'm talking about tonight uh, is territorial. God wants us to have land. Uh, he wants us to possess the gates. He wants us to have revelation. Uh, so we can frustrate every power of the enemy. Are you tired of being frustrated tonight? I'm tired of being frustrated. I want to frustrate the fire out of the devil. Some people are afraid to laugh at the devil for what he's going to do back to them. I'm not afraid. Listen, I hope one of you claims one of these plots of land. Those people call us. They cut us a deal from heaven. Uh, and we can go down as a church uh, and we can laugh at the devil and say, what you thought was for you, God used for us. Amen. Amen. Rising by faith and dominion, exercising authority and control. I want to close tonight. We have a specific calling in the blessing of Abraham. If it's our inheritance tonight, Abraham's blessing. And it is. Then we have a specific calling. We're not called to bless one another. <clears throat> this is why I don't like. Uh, 
I don't like Bible studies where everybody lays hands on their uh, one another and prophesies over each other and gives them the word. If you're doing that, just stop. Because we're not called to bless one another. It wasn't in my sermon, I just felt like I needed to say it. Because man has been obsessed with self ever since the garden. We're called to bless these people around us. We have people around us that they don't know the love of Jesus Christ, and they, they des something inside of them desperately wants to know more than they know. In the blessing of Abraham is a calling beyond ourselves. In thy seed, your nations and families shall be blessed. Our calling is not to self tonight. It's beyond you and I. The biggest, probably one of the biggest needs we have in the church is people who will just help. I mean, somebody who will just serve. Now, Caleb, he, he's going to be pastoring in, in Chicago here in a few months or whenever him and Gina get on their road trip for that land. And he made an announcement tonight that we needed some volunteers for Pastor Martinez on 6 a.m. And Pastor Williams came in and he added uh, some much-needed correction. Uh, I would be embarrassed if there wasn't 20 guys there on Saturday morning. I'd be embarrassed. And you should be embarrassed. Because this is a, this, these, these flags can come up by people who are slothful. Slothful is a fancy Bible word means lazy. So please be a disciple this Saturday. And whoever that is, get four or five of his friends to come on Saturday. <laughs> God gives us this wonderful privilege of human speech to release God's spiritual grace. This is what I love about our church. This is what I love about our pastor. And this is what I love about you. Is someone can walk into this church who's failed. Someone can walk into this church who's just had a rough go in life. That's an Australian term, just a rough time in life. They can be miserable. They can feel like, although there may be 500 people here tonight, that they are the only person on planet Earth. They can walk into a place like this and people will befriend them. People will reach out to them. And through human speech, they will release God's grace. It's a great mystery tonight. And I'm going to finish. How people bound by darkness through the preaching of Jesus Christ, just words of a man can be released into the love of Jesus Christ. And it's a mystery. Simple words spoken by you and I, anointed, backed up by God's Word, delivered according to God's Word, can place people in a position where God can reunite them with himself. That is the miracle of Jesus Christ tonight. The Queen of Scotland feared no one. Because at any time she could have literally like John the Baptist's head could be served on a platter, could be removed. She didn't fear anyone that was under her. She didn't fear anyone that served her. She didn't fear any of those that were in her military. But she did fear one person. She says, I fear the tongue of the great Christian evangelist John Knox more than 10,000 armies. She said this because people were moved and spiritual grace was conferred upon people by the words of one solitary man whose heart was aligned with God, who had God's purposes on his mind. And I tell you here this evening, there are 10,000 demons that can be chased by one young person here tonight who aligns their heart with Jesus Christ. And through human speech, God can change everything. And we bring God and man back together. Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. 
Your words can create a bridge to the impossible tonight. And this, I think, is so incredible. Why has God done this? I don't know, but he has. There's a quality in the kingdom of God that can only be accomplished by the foolishness of preaching. Yes. I love preaching. We are a preaching fellowship. That's what they say. Because preaching is the method by which God uses man and words biblically aligned tonight to reunite a fallen, sinful creation back with the Creator God. And it's like we get plugged into a nuclear power plant and we have unlimited authority and options in Jesus Christ. And this comes by a dimension of human speech and everyone in this place is called to speak the words of Almighty God into every single circumstance. This tonight is the blessing of Abraham. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Father, we thank you, God, the Holy Ghost. We bow our heads this evening and close our eyes tonight. The blessing of Abraham.